Let me show you how to get started running the new Llama 3.2 Vision models. We're going to use Hugging Face Transformers to make this easy to do. I'm going to run these using Snowflake's notebooks, but you can run this on any notebooks. What I want to do today is first a little bit of background on the model. Then we're going to walk through a notebook showing you how to use it with transformers. And then at the end, I want to show you how it can do really well on some of the chart question answer questions we have. To start with, these new vision language models that we're getting, such as this from Meta, are great for a lot of different types of use cases. You can input text and image into these models and then get text out. So we can use them for object recognition, image captioning, to even chart understanding, text rich understanding as well. I'm gonna show you all of that. To get started with this model, you're gonna to want to first go to Hugging Face and this model is gated, so you'll need to give permission. You have to tell people kind of a little bit, you have to tell Meta a little bit of who you are because there's some countries that this model is restricted to. If you do that, you'll have access to it, then you'll be able to download the model directly from Hugging Face. And the model card, of course, has tons of information about the model. Now, to put the model in context, there are a lot of vision models, and they are really growing on a regular basis. You have a lot of choices here from ones from commercial providers, such as OpenAI, Anthropic. You have a number of open source ones. The Meta is one. QN is another one here. So take a look at these. Realize that I'm showing you one model, but there's many other possible models that might work better for your particular use case. So let's walk through the notebook. I do have a couple of things I need to show for the Snowflake folks. So just the rest of you just hang out. I'm using a Snowflake container runtime. This allows me to run on a GPU. For the compute pool here, I have a medium, which is four A10s. This model takes about 30 gigabytes of memory, so you can't fit it all on just one A10. I needed multiple A10s to spread that through. Hugging Face Transformers takes care of spreading it through, making it easy to do. But just so all of you are aware of that, I also had to open up some external integrations because we need to download the latest Transformers library. We also need to download the model from Hugging Face. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. As we go through the notebook here, first thing is we do have to upgrade to the latest version of Transformers. The Transformers team updated Transformers about 15 minutes after Meta released their model. So that way you could use Transformers with the new model. So we'll, we'll bring that in. We're gonna go ahead and import that in so that class in so we'll be able to use that. We have our information here for logging in and using Hugging Face. Now, remember, you're gonna to have to use your Hugging Face token here. I've hid mine out and then the model ID that you want. This general approach that I'm showing you, you can use this for all sorts of Transformers models if you're not comfortable with Transformers. So here's our little bit of code. If you weren't sure where to get this from, look on the model card that I showed earlier that has this information. So we can now get this model. At this point, it's gonna take a little bit because it needs to download. You can see here, I spent about a minute 30 to download. So just be aware of that. So now let's start using the model. I got a fun little image I started off with, right? Our, our llama with sunglasses and snowflake. So I'm gonna pass this through the model here. So you can see here, this is the image. The second URL there is the image there. Then I asked it to write a haiku for this. What you should be thinking about is all the creative ways that you can bring in an image, match it with the text to do some sort of thing. Telling a haiku is a little bit fun, but just so you can see that, and we can see the, the haiku that comes out here as well. So ton of fun. It's actually able to parse that image, take that text, give us a useful output as well. So that's our starting point there. There's a ton we can do. Let me show you another example. Here, we're taking a table that's out there. So this is, we're gonna move into document understanding like that. So now we're gonna take this table, we pass this through, and I ask it to make a JSON representation where the methods are keys and the data sets are sub keys. And you can see here, it does a nice job of parsing that table out. Which brings me now to one of the things I wanna mention about this model and how it tracks. If we look at this particular model, for example, and we look at how well it does for chart question answer, 
it's one of the strengths of this model on the chart QA benchmark compared to other models. So this again, you should always check a couple of models when you're doing this. If you want to take a look at that chart QA data set, it's out there. This is an example of one of the charts that's being asked for for the questions like that. And I've been able to see some folks on the internet have talked about a little bit about how this new Llama model was actually a little bit better at solving these types of use cases. So if you want to test it out, just follow this notebook to be able to do that. Here, I got one more example through this. Now we're going to take this invoice and we're going to ask it to see how well it understands the invoice. Can it go from the invoice date to the due date and explain that? And here, you'll see that it does have an understanding and it is able to give us an explanation. So I'm really looking forward to this generation of video language models and everything that you can do. Go get started on it.